Hey guys, it's Loretta and Dan, we're back again with another podcast and in the last podcast we're talking about how um, Loretta gained a lot of weight in her pregnancy and in this podcast we're going to talk about how she lost all that weight again. So over to you Loretta. Thanks Dan. So yeah, previously I um, just touched on the fact that uh, after Sophia was born, our second daughter... I ended up at 90 kilos after she was born. And my normal weight should be around the 57, 58. That's what I kind of would normally have been. When I um, typed in my BMI, and I'm just going to have a quick look now, um, I was severely, severely overweight. So I'm 165 centimetres tall and I weighed 90 kilos so 90 kilos was after she gave birth. Yes, after yep. I gave birth. That's what I ended up at. Yep. So that's without the baby, without the placenta. And keep in mind, the baby was like just over four kilos. Yeah. The baby's a beast. Okay, so my BMI was 33.1 and I was considered obese. Obese. Yeah, I so was how's the B- obese. So you've got your phone there, you've got the BMI scale. Does it say how they're calculated? Um, Where does it go to morbid? Oh. Okay. So overweight from memory is like 25 to 30, which regardless of what I do. So, so just chuck me, chuck me your phone. Okay. So regardless, you know, I mentioned my weight before. So regardless of what I do, I sit in the overweight category, um, which is between like 25 and 30, I think. Don't quote me on it roughly, but I think it's between 25 and 30. Regardless of what I do, I mean, I have to be literally under 79 kilos to be in the green, to be under 25 BMI, which is like, for me, I've done it, but everyone tells me I need to gain weight. So what you're trying to say is that, yes, like even though I was obese, it yeah, might like, not be that for others. Is that right? Like don't take well, BMI as the I don't you know. know. I, I think when you're – okay, I'd say – I'm not taking this as a as a red hard line in the sand, but I'd say BMI wise, if you're over thirty, mm-hmm. I'd say regardless, I think it's probably not a hard line in the sand, but I'm going to say it's probably too much. Yeah. So here you were thirty three, yep. which was just in the red. That was that was a wake up call actually, when I typed in my BMI and just the fact that I was yeah in the red essentially, I was like holy crap. Um, how the hell did I get to be 90 kilos? Um, I started at 68 kilos, so I'd say I probably got up to about 100, didn't I, Dan? Yeah, I'd say so. I'd say you peaked at 100. Yeah. You were 90 kilos. Post for the baby, yes. Yeah, and you got down to, let's just say 50, 57. Yeah. So you lost 33 kilos. Yeah. So you lost... 33 kilos of, uh, of body mass. Yeah, post-baby. most of it w- would have been fat, right? Um, so th- it's saying here, right, on a, where is it, on a government website, basically the consequences of obesity being morbidly obese, uh, in my opinion, the longer you're overweight for, you know, you're going to experience more of the side effects and the consequences. If you're overweight for not very long and you lose the weight pretty quickly, you, you're probably going to get away with a lot of it. But, you know, if you're, you know, it's like anything. If, if you smoke and drink for 20, 30 years, it all comes down to DNA, but more than likely you're probably going to do a lot of damage, right? Like you see some alcoholics, they've got these big red noses, all their veins in their face are burst, like they definitely do some damage. So it says here the consequences of obesity all cause uh, mortality. So death, you know, it obviously goes up a lot higher. High blood pressure, um, hypertension, high LDL cholesterol, low HDL cholesterol, um, type 2 diabetes, coronary heart disease, stroke. Those are two very scary ones, especially with COVID and everything going on. And this one here... um, Gallbladder disease. Mm. Do you want to talk about your experience, Loretta? Yes. I lost 33 kilos in exactly a year. So you started losing weight and you were very aggressive. So 
I remember saying to Loretta, hey, slow down, chill out. You could give yourself gallstones the way you're going because she, um, for those of you who don't know her, she doesn't do anything by halves. You know, I just, I'll say that and she's very determined. So, you know, let's just say the normal recommended weight loss is normally probably about half a kilo to a kilo a week, totally maximum normally. Loretta at one stage at the beginning was losing like two to three kilos a week. And I get that some of that is water weight because of how overweight she was. But at the same time, she kept that up for months on end. Like two kilos a week was pretty standard, right? Mm. Because your calorie intake too was so high and then you just all of a sudden cut it. Yeah. So, And I think I need to just fully disclose the fact yeah. that um, – I wasn't actually breastfeeding, so yeah. my breastfeeding journey um, was ended cut quite short quite early. Yeah. You know, I didn't have a lot of supply, and our daughter, obviously, you know, she was four kilos, growing quite quickly, and I just didn't have enough supply for her. So, um, yeah, essentially, she was breastfed for a month, and once I stopped, that's when my hormones over time, but, you know, they did get back to normal. So, you know, I didn't have those massive cravings for, you know, the tub of yogurt or the block of cheese or the ice cream or, you know, pizza and all those things, right? Um, It drastically changed. Like my hormones shifted quite quickly, didn't they? Yeah, definitely. So that also contributed. Yeah, totally. Yeah, obviously, right. But the hormone stuff and also the reducing calorie intake because because your hormones were so elevated, your body was, you know, sped up. You're basically just craving a lot of food. And a lot of that too was because you had a human growing inside you. And so, yeah, so initially your weight loss, it was very aggressive. It was two to three weeks I mean, two to three kilos a week. And the thing is, when you're used to being 55, 58 kilos and you weigh 90 kilos, you know, naturally there's going to be some urgency there. Um, Like, I think you had a sore back and things right from memory. Yeah, I had, um, like, my feet were completely swollen. I had sciatica, you know, nerve issues. I couldn't tie up my feet, like my shoes, remember? Yeah. Like I was just a wreck. Yeah, that's right. I used to have to tie your shoes yeah. and you had like real bad chafing. <laughs> and you had to call like one of your mates who, um, oh, you know, right. she's yes. a, a, you know, and she's like had experience with chafing because she's a runner. Yes. And so when she runs, she gets chafing. And yeah, I got slowed ask. down with the chafing, didn't I? Yeah, and because you were doing like a lot of walking, a lot of exercise. And I think at times you're probably trying to run as well and too on the treadmill, thighs, right? they just kept on rubbing against yeah. each other, didn't they? So that was one of the things too. We started doing more activity and steps and things. You got the chafing, right, which slowed you down. Yeah, I did. Yeah, so look, and the thing was, you know, the weight loss, it was aggressive. You know, I did warn Loretta. I said, hey, you know, you're going to have to slow down on the weight loss because – you could get gallbladder stones, gallbladder issues. Yeah. But and I think also I – well, I did do quite a bit of exercise. Like when the baby was sleeping at night, yeah, like in that activity period activity steps. Yeah. Yeah. Like I would yeah. literally be yeah. at the gym at, the gym, yeah. at 11 o'clock at night. Like yeah. without On fail, the treadmill, walking. Like I yeah. would be doing my 10,000 steps. Every and day. And I was just so determined. Yeah. Like – if I couldn't do it in the day because I was, you know, had the baby on me or, you know, it didn't work out with the pram or whatever reason, right, I would be at the gym at 11 o'clock at night making sure that I do my exercise. Yeah, without definitely. Without fail. Yep, totally. Totally. And I can definitely attest to that at that stage. So I've always been into fitness but at that stage, from memory, I was actually just training at home, working out. I had some gymnastic rings and some kettlebells and dumbbells, you know, yoga mat, all that sort of jazz. And I was training at home on, on the deck because Loretta, literally any gym time that we had, she was like just shonking and taking basically. Yeah, and I used to wear your clothes, didn't I? I think so because you're too big. Yeah. Yours. Yeah. Yeah, I was too big. Yeah, so, yeah, so... 
you were definitely very aggressive about it and you it was a priority right yeah i you had it in front of mind like it was yeah. just that was the number one obviously like you know looking after sophia i definitely put that first don't get me wrong oh 100 percent. But, but you know it's your health right like yeah. you had to, and you know, also, that's not anything to be taken lightly like i get you know like it's just a number on the scale you, you look down it's like no that's how to be morbidly obese yeah, no, or, or or give yourself like oh it's okay i was just pregnant i had a baby it's like no you've You've got to take responsibility and do something about it. Yep. Or, you know, there's consequences to these sorts of things. And you experienced this, you know, you had your... Um, sure. So I think it was about four months into this... Um, weight loss journey, right? Weight loss journey. So how much had you lost already? Probably 10 kilo, eh? Or At more? At least, yeah. I think probably more. I think it might be Might 15. have been a bit more, yeah. Because you're sort of almost coming towards the end of your weight loss from memory when it started happening. Oh, no. It was a bit earlier than that. But when you were in the hospital having scans and stuff, you could have, like, stopped losing weight at that stage. Yeah. Because you were only low 60s from memory back then. Oh, no, I was further. I Are you was sure? I like 70s, yeah. You sure? Yeah. But when it got really bad, you, you were lighter. Yeah. So. That's because more weight had come off. So, yeah, but how did, how did it come on anyway? Okay, so basically... Look, I don't know the scientifics around it. I'm not going to get into that. But um, the easiest way that I, I can explain it, or maybe, Dan, you can explain how gallstones happen. But um, essentially, because I was just so heavily overweight, yeah, all so, of the yeah, fat needed yeah. to go somewhere. Didn't yeah, it? <laughs> you know, it has to be burnt, right? Like, yeah. there's no magic to weight loss. You know, gurus influences you know if i tell you that there is i tell you that there's some perfect macronutrient profile and some perfect skinny tea and you know some perfect workout program that they just so happen to have designed and this is the thing that's going to make you magically shed all these pounds but you know in reality body fat is you know that's just look at this with some common sense right it's just body fat is stored energy on your body it's actual fat the fat needs to be burnt just like the dietary fat that you eat needs to be either burnt or stored and normally a combination of both right so in this case you know that body fat had to be burnt it had to go somewhere mm. it doesn't just evaporate into thin air well, it can through the sweating. Like, I'd already well, sweat a lot, that's didn't I? <laughs> one way that body fat gets excreted from the body through yep. sweat. Urine. Another way, urine, through your breathing, and also through feces. So, you know, it does come out through those ways, but it still has to be burnt. It doesn't just magically come out through your sweat. Like, it has to still go through the process, right? So, that fat still has to go through your gallbladder. Yep. You know, to be burnt. Yeah. You know, and obviously when you got that much fat coming through quickly. your gallbladder so quickly, you, you know, if you've got two to three kilos of fat coming through that gallbladder a week being burnt, that's a lot of sludge and, and build up and stuff. And obviously it's just it's too much. It's just it's too much for the body to take. And that's what happened, right? You started getting this weird pain. Yeah, I did. So... It was, yeah, I think maybe like four months in or something like that. I can't remember exactly, but I started to get a bit of pain in my tummy and I was just like, this is a bit strange. Like I've never really had any pain before. Yeah. And um, like it was an acute pain. Like it just, I just tried to brush it off. Like I thought, oh, like maybe it's just, I don't know. But I just brushed it off for a bit, didn't I? Yeah. Yeah, exactly. So... You know, as Loretta was just saying, um, the pain came on all of a sudden. She tried brushing it off. You know, she probably just thought it was a stitch or something. Like, you wouldn't naturally assume, oh, shit, I've got gallstones and I'm going to need to have surgery or get my gallbladder removed. You just, you know, we, we, we all get little aches and niggles all the time, especially exercising. By the time I went to physio for my hip, they were telling me I needed a hip replacement. Yeah. And I'm like, what the fuck? Like, it was thought it was this tight muscle somewhere I couldn't quite work out how to get to or how to stretch or how to strengthen. Like I didn't think that my hip was fucked, 
right? And, and that's the thing sometimes is you, you can think that, you know, that something's not necessarily that bad or, you know, it's, it's fine. But, you know, in reality, you know, under the skin it can be very different. So basically what happened after that, Dan, is that um, the pain got too much, didn't it? And I remember waking up. It kind of came on worse at night and there was – one time when I just literally woke up at 1.30 in the morning and I've never been to hospital myself. Like besides having the babies, I've never gone to emergency for myself. But I was like, I am going to ER and I didn't know how I was going to get there. I didn't actually even know if I was going to be able to drive. But you had two kids at home and I was just like, okay, no, I will go. I'll be able to drive. So I drove myself to emergency and I was like in crippling pain um, and it was just excruciating. Long story short. And that was short, the first time, right? Yeah. So, and Looking, how heavy were you then? Uh, I think I'd lost maybe 10 to 15 kilos at the point. Yeah, so you're still well and truly like you're only really halfway there yeah. to your like ideal body and, and weight loss. Yeah. So, look, long story short, they didn't run a huge amount of tests. They were so busy. I'm not going to go into what happened, but essentially the following day I went to my local doctor and then they did a referral to get an ultrasound done. So then I waited another few days and then I got the ultrasound done and the ultrasound showed up that I had – one gallstone, which was um, 11 millimetres, and I had a huge amount of sludge, like gallstone or gallbladder sludge essentially. So my liver was like really fatty and like, yeah, I had a fatty liver as well and it wasn't good, put it that way. So I think because of the size um, – they said at the moment they didn't need to operate on it, which was a good I don't thing. really think it was the size. It was the location too, right? Well, maybe. It, it wasn't blocking anything. Yes. Well, that's memory. true. Yeah. I remember that was the main conversation because it was like, in theory, you could have had it operated on because it was really, really affecting you. Mm. You know, it wasn't just a nothing thing. It was keeping you up at night. It was... Well, it was just excruciating. Well, that's what it looked like. Yeah. And you're not a hypochondriac or you don't go on about things or, you know, really sort of carry on like a drama queen. But I remember when you'd have this gallstone attack, you'd literally be laying on the floor just in like the fetal position. Yeah, we'll put it this way. It was like worse it's not than giving childbirth, like yeah, giving birth. That's what you said, right? It was, like even to the doctor in yeah. emergency, I said – I've got like a three or four month old at home and I said this pain is like a thousand times worse than giving birth. And keep in mind that baby's over four kilos. And at birth. I had no pain relief at yeah. birth. Right? Yeah, I birthed so. both kids with no pain relief. Yeah. So the pain that I experienced was just excruciating. Yes, yes, it was. It was. It was very unsettling to witness and you know, and on top of that too, you're only halfway there. Like you still had another 10, 15 kilos to go on your weight loss. Mm. So, you know, it was a big hurdle. Yeah, and the, the crazy thing is that pretty much um, a lot of things that I was eating were setting it off. So it was just um, quite frustrating where, like I remember – what was I eating one day? And it just... Donuts. You had a big thing for donuts. Well, yeah, okay. I I still love my donuts even though I was losing weight. <laughs> yeah, don't get me wrong. Like we say that she's losing weight, you know, that Loretta was on a diet. And, you know, she, as she said before in the last podcast, it was more sort of just portion control. It wasn't like this crazy thing where it was paleo or gluten-free or... Don't eat donuts. Like she still ate donuts. She still did all those things on a regular basis. Yeah, so I had a donut, didn't I? Yeah, and donuts, for those of you who don't know, who don't track macros, um, 
donuts are quite high in sugar, but they're also but they're very high in fat. So they're high in sugar and fat. So there's a lot of fat in a donut. Yeah, so it completely yeah. set me off. Yeah, so fatty foods, wasn't it? Was yeah, the thing fatty that foods. Got you. It's always fatty foods. And even like at the peak of it, say we'd go out and eat a burger, a burger would set you off too, yeah, right? Yeah, I just got to the point where I just you couldn't eat couldn't anything, eat anything that was, yeah, you couldn't eat out or couldn't eat anything that was overly fatty. Yeah. It, so you basically had to like really l- lower your fat intake. I which, did. You know, and when you think about it, guys, this actually makes sense, right? Because if you've got a lot of stored body fat on your body and you're eating a lot of dietary fat, that's a lot of fat that's coming through the system being burned, right? So, which, you know, everything in moderation, but in this case, it's a lot. So, you know, if you're losing a lot of weight, you know, you're burning a lot of body fat, you probably don't really need to eat a lot of fat. Yeah, well, I ended up stopped having, like, olive oil in the pan because that, even yeah. that was setting me off. Yeah. So it was like... It got bad. Like, yeah. so, you know, initially you had the sharp pain and stuff, but it got, like, a lot worse. Like, that gallstone issue for all the scans going to the hospital all that stuff it was there all the way to the end of her weight loss journey until she finally got to the point where she was at about maintenance and once she started to maintain her weight she stopped losing weight just all of a sudden that's when it started to stop yeah it stopped playing up Mm. and now she can eat fatty foods again yeah. And it doesn't, like, she's had plenty of grilled since I've been up here in Queensland. Like, yeah, so, which is, you know, I actually don't know if, um, oh, no, actually I did remember do that whole um, gallstone flush. Do you remember that? Oh, yeah. Because I actually got to the point where, okay, if this doesn't work, I'm going to go who have an knows, Who knows uh, if that worked or not because... Look at some woo-woo thing that you found online. It was like drink a ton of olive oil and, and have an apple or something. Like who knows if that worked? I think it was lemon juice and a bit of apple and yeah. But it was you did something still crazy. have. But you did still have another attack after you did that. Yeah, I did. Which makes me think it d- didn't work. And when but it think, moved it somewhere else. Yeah, but when you think about it logically, right? Like drinking a ton of olive oil, from what I understand about gallstones, is not going to help it. Yeah. If anything, it's probably going to give you another one. Yeah. Look, I'd so tried. So this is a classic example, way. guys, of finding <laughs> things online from gurus and authors and whoever they are. Who like I'm not a nutrition expert. I'm gonna I'm gonna clear this up straight away. Like this is just my opinion. I'm a personal trainer. I've got a cert for in fitness. You know, I am qualified to speak about nutrition as far as basically referring you to the Healthy Eating Australian Guidelines and talking to you a bit about nutrition in a way where it's in line with the Healthy Eating Australia Guidelines, which there's been a ton of research and stuff done on. Anything outside that is well and truly outside of my scope of practice. I cannot be promoting a paleo diet or even this thing that Loretta did where she drank a shitload of olive oil and um, ate some apples because, you know, that's not something that's in the Australian health eating guidelines, basically. It's it's just not. So this is what we're talking about too, guys. you just, you got to be very careful where you're getting your information from. I think also this just highlights the fact that you were desperate. I was desperate. You were desperate. I was. It was, I was either like... that or surgery, you were online. And you know what? And this is how these fake gurus, how they get you guys. You guys are desperate. You guys need to lose weight now. You guys need to fix whatever's going on now. You guys, you know, need to get rid of the school stone right now. You know, medical um, industry has potentially failed you guys in the short term. You've gone and got medication or whatever. It hasn't worked. And then this guru comes along. Ah, I've got a gold stone flush. Here we go. A bottle of olive oil down the hatch. I did it. One apple. Exactly. Yeah. You know, and that could have made it so much worse. But I could have th- been in hospital, to be honest. But let's be real, right? The thing that actually did fix the gallstone was when you lost weight, you stopped losing weight and you moved back to maintenance. Yeah. That's when you stopped having the attacks. You still had it after the crazy gallstone flush. Not as many, though. But you still had it. 
Yeah. You, you had a massive one after you got your second dose of the vaccine. Yep. So, you know, it could have been for any reason, but, you know, so basically what we're trying to say is that this gallstone flush did not fix it. Well, that day the you called me, I was out doing something, and you were like, you need to drive me to the hospital right now. I think I was at work. Yeah. I think I was training clients out in the park. Yeah. Either I was actually going to call the ambulance. It was that bad. Yeah. So. And nothing would help. Like, I had a couple of Panadol, had a shower. Just, I was so bad. Yeah. And then it passed. Like, it just is crazy. Just this acute pain, and then it just passes. So. Yeah, exactly right. Mm. Yep, yep. Yeah, so look, so weight loss, you know, I've, there's been times in my life when I've been really overweight, well, quite a few times actually, and I've had to lose weight. And the thing is with weight loss, it is not easy. There, there is no quick fixes. In Loretta's case, you know, she... She could have had a gall bladder removed. And you know what? One day she still might have to. All because she gained a lot of weight and lost it again. Did, did she lose it too quick? Yeah, probably. 35 kilos basically, or let's just call it 35 kilos in a year. That's fast. You know what? She's kept it off. She's kept it off. How long have you kept it off for now? Um, several months probably Yeah, so I'm still the same weight I'm still 57 kilos But like it's been several months, right, hasn't it? So, yeah So since November I've been steady at the same weight Yeah, so that's, I don't know November, December, January November, December, January, February March so about five months Five months, yeah So she's maintained it and, and you know what? Yeah, okay Might have lost the weight a bit too quick Been a bit too aggressive Had the gallbladder issue you know, she was warned, but, you know, she doesn't... Oh, she's getting better at listening to me. Oh. <laughs> slowly. Thank you. Slowly. Um, yeah, but look, in saying that if she took it slowly, she might have given up, she might have quitted, she might still have that weight on her, which in it the long term... to other complications. Yeah, in the long term, it could have been much worse for her health. So, look, guys, you, you know, we're going to have to try to get away from this good and bad you know, with some of the stuff, because the thing is, who knows whether it was good to lose all that weight that quickly or bad. Who knows? It could be really good. It looks like it's been really good. You know, it could have been really bad to leave that weight on because the, the longer you're overweight, in my experience, I've been overweight a few times. I was like a chubby kid, even though I was good at sports. I was still quite chubby. I really like my food. And the thing I've noticed, the longer you're overweight, the harder it is to shift that weight. Your body has like this homeostasis it wants to maintain. It wants to be a specific whatever it is. And, um, you know, I could be wrong here, but I think there's been some stuff around set points. And the thing is, if you've been, let, let's say you're five foot six, you're a guy and you're 90 kilos, and you've been five foot six and 90 kilos for the last 20 years, and your normal weight is 75 kilos. Trying to lose that weight, okay, if you've never dieted before, it probably won't be that bad because you don't have all the metabolic adaptions. But if you have, and then you try to, to lose that weight, you've got the metabolic adaption part. But on top of that, your body is used to being 90 kilos. Like, it's fucking really hard to lose weight. You know, it is like, and I think that's why... You know, they get you of all these gimmicks and fat-burning pills and this and that is because people get desperate. Your body has this homeostasis it wants to maintain, which is why, in my opinion, I think, in some cases anyway, aggressive fat loss, you know, is potentially better. Um, but, you know, that's just my opinion. Um, and obviously the other side to it, let's say you've always been overweight your, your whole life, right? You're 90 kilos, 5 foot 6. If you can get down to your weight, your ideal weight, let's say your ideal weight's 75 kilos, you get down to that weight. If you can maintain that weight for two or three years, in theory that should be your new set point. 
And in Loretta's case, about 58 kilos, it was always her set point. Like, she wasn't meant to be 95 no. or a new weight of Definitely 80 not. because Definitely she's not. had two babies. Let me to wrap it up. Oh, well, guys, it looks like um, we're going to have to get out of here and wrap this thing up. Uh, look, if you guys have stayed to the end, thank thanks you. Thanks for listening. Yeah, thanks, and uh, we'll catch you guys again. Hope you all have a good day. See ya.